an ontologically perfect being. I think this is a good segue to start talking about the Greek word omni, which means all or all encompassing. Don't you think that gathering all the perfections um, of, of everything possible or known would potentially lead to contradictions? Yes, I, I think, you know, this is largely what I'm looking at in the book, which is uh, so, yeah, you can talk about and we can talk about this later, which is perfectly just and perfectly merciful. Just don't work together. You can't have that as a really easy one. But uh, the biggest problem is divine foreknowledge. And this is why there's been a recent movement away from God having divine foreknowledge is something called open theism. Open theism is the um, belief that uh, um, God doesn't know the future outcome of freely willed events. Now, I don't believe in libertarian free will, but let's part that for a second. Now, if you have divine foreknowledge, what's the point in God creating everything? If he knows it's all, he knows everything that's going to happen, just, you know, knows it's all going to happen, but also would have no need to have joy, get extra joy. So it's not like I'm creating to get extra joy because I, I'm ontologically perfect. I don't need joy, extra, more joy. I'm just, oh, I have a perfect amount of joy. So there's no need to create, but you're creating knowingly that things all go wrong. And then if you look at the Bible, God gets it all wrong. His design and creation goes wrong. And he's, he, he, in the Noah's flood, he just like, destroys all the humanity by eight people because he cocked mm -hmm. it up and then starts again. It's like doing a puzzle on, on, a, on a table and then realizing you messed up and just throwing it all on the floor and getting out a new puzzle and, and starting all again. It's like, this is perfect. None of this makes sense in light of a perfect God. But then we have the idea of perfection, I think is an interesting word to look at, because I don't believe that perfection exists. And quite often I argue these things from a Christian's point of view, for example. So I say, like, if you believe in perfection, if you believe that all loving makes sense, then OK, let's go with that. Where does it lead you? It leads you into real problems. But I would say perfection doesn't even make sense uh, in itself, because I would say perfection is a goal orientated value statement. So you say something is perfect for Right. So if you if you're going to get if you're going to play rugby, you want to get a rugby ball. The rugby ball is perfect for playing rugby. But if you try and play cricket with it, you're going to get in trouble. It's not perfect for that. So you can't look at the ball just on its own and say this is a perfect ball. It's not. It's perfect for a task I might want to put it towards. But 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 just in and of itself. So saying God is perfect is kind of meaningless. And you, unless you say God is perfect for doing something. But then you say the only thing that makes sense is God is perfect for being God. Uh, it's just it's a tautology that, that is not giving you any useful information so yeah. i think i think the term god is perfect is itself a flawed concept i agree i think einstein who once said don't, don't judge a, um a fish by its ability to climb a ladder or something like that of that, of that sort of um sense because you, you're right you know if it's fit for a certain purpose uh, what are you comparing it with and, and what context it's, it's quite uh, uh, vague um i've got chris here's asking a yeah. question Thank you Good. for the super chat. Does the book uh, cover uh, presupposition? Well, not not particularly. So there's presupposition in what particular context? So you could say presupposing the truth of the Bible. And actually, most of the arguments here aren't to do with the Bible. There are some that bring in Bible, and we'll talk about Adam and Eve in a minute. Um, so there are, but 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 you know, it depends what form of presuppositionism you're talking about. Uh, of course, that's uh, an epistemological approach. Uh, which basically says I'm just presupposing the truth of this. So in terms of the Bible, that's like, I believe the Bible is true no matter what, deal with it. And it's like, yeah, but it's not true. Yeah, but it is true. Like, I presuppose it's true. So but, I mean, when you think about it, Jonathan, I mean, the word itself has lots of issues. Uh, the, the word presupposition on its own, if you're going to use that as epistemology, you're going to be up for trouble here. I mean, why, why presuppose anything? Well, the only reason why you presuppose is you have no access uh, to the information at all. So so the way that that could be used here is kind of Elvin Plantinga's kind of uh, properly basic belief. So you say that I, I believe God exists because I just have this properly basic belief and it, you, there's nothing that the evidence and rationality can do about that. But then equally, you and I can say, well, I've just got a properly basic belief that God doesn't exist. We'll deal with that. Uh, and so, you know, you, you end up getting nowhere. So uh, you can try the Alvin Plantinger approach, which I think is sort of a form of presuppositionalism in, in a yeah. way. Uh, so you pro properly basically believe that's that's uh, William Lane Craig's game. He's trying to get you to admit certain things. But he David Hume, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I mean that was inferred in in a lot of philosophies. You know, uh, uh, the, the 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 fact that uh, uh, the law of non contradictions can never be broken. Uh, where does logic come from? It seems to be right whether we're here to evaluate or not. Mathematics and things like that. But David Hume, in his book, and I can't remember now the book, but he was actually saying there's no such thing as as um, uh, as uh, uh, foreknowledge or, or things that you presuppose. All of these are re uh, re uh, reverse engineered um, experiences that we take back and, and sort of abstract that, put them in, a, in an abstract realm, but they are based on experience to start with. I'd agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you won't, yeah, you won't find disagreement with me from there. I mean, uh, I think things like logic, uh, so things like mathematics, which is effectively a form of logic, is a language that we use. Again, this is going back to conceptual nominalism. So mathematics does not exist out there. What we do is we create a language that allows us to understand reality and navigate reality. And we call that mathematics. And we and we represent reality in mathematical ter in mathematical ways. So logic, how does logic? Well, something like the law of non-contradiction, I would argue, uh, and I probably need to do a lot more thought on this, but I would argue that it's it's necessary just for mere existence. So in, in, in this book here, I, I, I have something called the argument from format, which says that if you don't have regularity, this is kind of goes to human thinking. If you if you don't have strict regularity, right? If things don't um, adhere strictly to a behaviour that that is unchanging, then you would just not have reality. Because imagine if like laws, physical laws, own natural laws only worked like ninety three percent of the time, you would just get decoherence. You get just things would stop existing. Like so much stuff is going on all the time. You just, you couldn't get reality. You couldn't get a meaningful reality, but like you wouldn't get off the ground. So in order to have reality, you have, it's just, it's just built into, it's like a necess necessary component of reality that things are regular. But and therefore, and Jonathan is not an a priori then. It's still a posteriori. It's still really a language that will explain the status of state of affairs. Yeah, it depends what you're talking about. It depends what you're talking about. If you're talking about what is a priori, like our knowledge of that, then yeah, I mean, all, all knowledge is is a posteriori, I would say. Uh, but 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 I, what I'm trying to say is that logic is kind of built into the fabric of reality. Like the law of non-contradiction, like you simply just can't have something that is something and something else at the same time, like existing and not existing at the same time. With quantum notwithstanding, like uh, I, I just think these things, like if you don't have them, you don't have reality. We do have reality. So they have to, it's necessarily baked into the system. Yeah, but even David Hume sort of argued that the, 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 the infamous example of the, the married bachelor, um, and uh, you know it's uh, it's it's connected to human logic of what is what is to be married. Um, if all humans cease to exist at some point, that uttering doesn't make any yeah. sense anymore. Yeah. That yeah. that yeah. phrase is, is is incoherent. It makes no yeah, sense. Yeah, because because of course you're talking about language. You you know you can get onto <laughs> Wittgenstein here, but you you know language is is. Yeah, is our way of understanding reality and communicating ideas, and it, and having we have ideas, but like without without sentient minds, you have no ideas. So you've just got a dead universe. You're not going to have morality. You're not going to have the second law of thermodynamics. I mean, you know, these are just tools, effectively, that we have constructed in order to understand our place in the universe. So have Christianity, because I think that that omni introduction. It came mostly in Christianity because in Judaism, you don't see that perfect God. And definitely before the Abrahamic gods, uh, the gods of the Olympus, um, um, mountain, uh, Mount Olympus and the gods of Egypt and the, the, the old gods were not perfect. They were sometimes evil. So that's a really interesting area. So over there, you've got um, Francesca Stavrakopoulou. Kapulu's book, uh, God and Anatomy. So that looks at, uh, very accurately, looks at how in the Hebrew Bible, uh, God is is anthropomorphic, right? So we have created, we had created, we as humans had created God in our own image. Mm -hmm. uh, and so God was, God had body parts. Uh, God was a jealous God. Uh, God mm -hmm. didn't know where Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. You know, all these problems for God's omni characteristics, right? For omni God, that is not omni God. That is a very parochial, man centered, anthropocentric God. So, but what then happened is is two thousand years of philosophy and theology happened, and 
we we start with this um corporeal god that then gets abstracted out that because as as time went on people realized that 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 caused a lot of problems and was very parochial and, and didn't do a very good job theologically so we abstracted god out of that for two thousand years until god is now some abstract entity out here outside of the universe that doesn't get involved doesn't walk around the universe all this kind of stuff god is just here as a, as a kind of conceptual idea almost but then now here's the problem that that that's fine and maybe that's fine but to say that both of those things are true is now a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. So they, the theologians have abstracted God out to this point that this thing cannot be consistent with this thing. So, so you've got to drop one of them. You've got to like, did God go and show his butt to know Moses? Did God, you know, have like all the parts of the body that, 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 that book shows, did God do these things, show his face and all this kind of stuff. Well, no, it's just symbolic. Okay, we'll drop that. That didn't happen. It ain't true. But if that didn't happen, then all of those foundation bricks of, say, the Exodus story didn't happen either, which means that if Jesus is coming along as an incarnated uh, God figure to fulfill all every jot and tittle of the law, but all of that never happens, then what, who was Jesus? So you got. So what I've done, um, and sorry, I'm going to spam my books again, but I've got, uh, I've got a book on the nativity and a book on the resurrection to saying, okay, these things didn't happen as reported in the gospel. They just didn't happen, right? Uh, certainly not as as claimed in the gospel. And the third book I'm writing presently with a with an archaeologist is a book on the Exodus, which is to say that okay, these two pillars of the Jesus story don't work, but these two pillars are built on an underlying foundation. Let's see if that makes sense or not. No, it doesn't. Archaeologically, historically, theologically, philosophically, none of that works, right? Um, or is nicked from other existing cultural, you know, elements. And and so you're just left with, well, OK, this is all rubbish. And you can retreat to some abstract idea of God still, some kind of deistic God. But this whole parochial Jesus uh, Judaism cult just didn't, didn't happen. Yeah. Did, did Christianity try, uh, did they try to have the cake and eat it too by creating a, an abstract God who still walked among us? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and but then, but, so what happened is, is while Jesus was supposedly alive, the the idea, and as he died, and shortly thereafter, the Holy Trinity didn't make sense. In fact, Matthew, Mark, and, and Luke, that 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 wasn't in their conception. John came along, and you started getting Jesus being a divine figure. I would say Matthew, Mark, and Luke saw him as a Messiah. John and the theology that was surrounding John in the com community had developed Jesus now into a divine, fully divine figure. So you get the Holy Trinity, but the Holy Trinity makes absolutely no sense. No one makes sense of the Trinity, which is why the most prevailing theory is called Mysterianism, which is, it's a mystery. I don't know how it works, but it works. Well, that looks very much like an unevidenced assertion to me.